Love it or hate it, you can't deny the fact that Don't Worry Darling has been a societal marvel. There are only a few movies where people are left confused both before and after it comes out, and this movie might just be number one on that list. In this video, we will be taking a closer look at what its sequel could look like and the insane unanswered questions the movie left us with. Let's begin. First up, Don't Worry Darling set up the perfect sequel without Florence Pugh. We all had questions before the movie, and most were still there. At least now that we've got the first movie out of the way, it's obvious that it's just a baseline to set up the perfect sequel, one that might not even need Florence Pugh. Even though Florence Pugh and the aesthetics of the film were the only two saving graces for this insane movie, there's a chance that her character Alice might not even be needed in the sequel. We now know as much as we possibly can about the other characters, the characters Bunny and Shelly could easily take the franchise forward without needing Harry Styles or Miss Flo. That might be necessary for the director Olivia Wilde because of how much drama was caused before the movie came out, with her being front and center of it. Now that Olivia is aware that she's messed things up enough with Florence that she might not even entertain the idea of her coming back to the set, it would make perfect sense for her to omit her and Styles from the script altogether and rely on herself to get the sequel going. She could easily put Bunny front and center and just go with the flow. The lingering question is, would a sequel even happen? While there's more than one way Olivia Wilde could milk the movie's success to make a sequel, there's still one question. Would it happen? Well, this is a fork in the road. On the one hand, Olivia Wilde would likely want to make as much money as possible from Don't Worry Darling by creating a sequel despite the movie being so badly received by the public. Alternatively, could Olivia justify spending even more time and money on something that's already regarded as a bit of a joke? The thing is, there's no such thing as bad publicity. Even though the world is mostly just poking fun at the movie, it's gotten more hype than anything else in the past couple of years. So even if you're making bank off of a joke, you'd still probably want to secure that bag as soon as possible. So it's likely that Olivia Wilde will take all of the criticism, get better writers to create a super solid plot for Bunny going forward, and match those aesthetics with a killer storyline too. But now she hasn't confirmed whether a sequel would even be on the table, so we might have to wait a little longer to learn more about it. Next up, let's look at some of the biggest unanswered questions and mysteries we can't ignore. First up, why hasn't anyone in the real world noticed Alice is gone? The movie gives us a brief look at what Alice's life was like before she was trapped in the world of mayhem. She's an actual surgeon, not even a nurse, but a literal surgeon, who's very important and probably has surgeries lined up for weeks. Someone will notice if you're working at any hospital as a surgeon and just stop showing up. Someone will ask questions. So why isn't anyone doing that? How can Jack just keep her trapped without anyone batting an eye? Does someone out there have to be freaking out about where a whole person went? Next, why can't women die in the Victory Project? One of the biggest twists in the movie is that if the men die in the Victory Project, they die in real life too. Something that Shelly and Alice take full advantage of. But if you think about it, Alice came close to dying several times, and the women in the project go through some crazy stuff. Still, there's never really that big deal around it because even if the women die in the Victory project, nothing happens to them. The question is why? How could the project even work like that? Aren't they all in a simulation? How do you tell a simulation that it should only be a risk to the men's lives and have no effect on the women? It just doesn't make any sense at all. Also, how has Alice survived that long? A little over halfway through the movie, we discover that Alice isn't just crazy and hallucinating. She's chained to her bed and is in a simulation, one that her fiancé Jack put her in. The movie just skims through this part. We see Jack keeping Alice alive by dropping some water in her mouth with a rag and adjusting her eyes. But let's be honest, Alice can't survive on just a few drops of water. She probably needs a lot of medication, eye drops, and constantly moving around in bed so she doesn't develop bed sores. A few drops of water might have got her through a few days, but it can't keep her alive for months. As we see in the movie, it simply doesn't make any sense. You were so unhappy! You hated your life! It was my life! My life! You don't get to take that from me! I gave this to you! 
Coming up, how does Bunny know the truth? When a frantic Alice tries to get Bunny and break out of the whole simulation, she discovers the shocking truth that Bunny isn't oblivious to it all. She knows exactly what's going on. Now, throughout the movie, Frank makes it very clear that Alice is special and that there's been no one like her before. That would mean that no one has been able to see through the whole simulation thing but her, but clearly, Bunny knows what's going on and even knows about her life outside of the Victory Project, with her kids not being alive and everything. But if Alice is the only special one, how in the world does Bunny know what's up and she's still alive and kicking? Next up, why didn't anyone try to kill Alice? Toward the movie's end, Alice doesn't hide the fact that she knows exactly what's going on and she'll do anything to get out. But between killing Jack and finally making it back to the headquarters, there's a part where she's just hanging out at the cul-de-sac and isn't running or anything. The other men who know the truth about the Victory Project are doing nothing. No one's charging at her, trying to trap her. Nothing. They're all just looking at her, freaking out, and don't do anything about the whole situation until she gets in the car and tries to make her great escape. Not to mention, what were the earthquakes? Throughout the movie, we see these massive earthquakes shake the entire town. Alice was the only one who'd notice them, and the rest of the people would continue with life as if nothing had happened, ignoring the earth shaking violently beneath them. While ignoring everything might be a part of the overall simulation, it still doesn't explain what the earthquakes were. Were they Alice's subconscious trying to wake up? Was there a massive train near real-life Alice that made her shake and subsequently Alice's entire world in the simulation? What in the Victory Project is going on? Coming up, why does Shelly kill Frank? Another big twist towards the movie's end was that Shelly just couldn't deal with her perfect alpha husband and stabbed him right in the abs and killed him. But as she did that, she said, it's my turn now. But the question is, her turn for what exactly? Is she going to take over the Victory Project? Will it be the women enslaving the men? Or is Shelly going to become the absolute ruler of them all? Why did she kill Frank? And what does she even want? Stupid, stupid man. Finally, what in the world happens to Alice and Jack? After two painful hours of Alice going back and forth about what she wants to do, she finally kills Jack and heads out of the Victory Project through the headquarters. But this doesn't mean that she's going back to a happy, healthy life. Sis is going to wake up strapped to a bed, next to the husband she just killed. And after weeks or months of being in a coma, her body won't work as a normal person's would. So in a way, did Alice just doom herself in the process of getting out? I'm part of something important, Alice. Guess we're either never going to find out or wait until the sequel comes out, but considering there's a very low chance that Florence Pugh will be returning as Alice, there's a chance that this might be closure we're not going to get. Alice, we're perfect in here. And on that very frustrating note, we'll wrap up today's video. Are there any unanswered questions you might have noticed that weren't in this video? Let us know in the comments below. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. We'll see you at the next one.